You can be seated, and uh, while you're finding your seat, I'm going to invite you to take your Bible or your Bible app and turn to the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 6 is where we're going to be as we're continuing our series called Just Jesus, where we're looking at the, the Gospel of Luke, the story of Jesus in the Bible. And uh, we're focused right now on Jesus' wisdom. He teaches practically uh, how to live our lives. Uh, if you don't have a Bible with you, that's fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the, the seats around you. They look like this. Turn to page 1097, and you will find our text for the day. Luke chapter 6, page 1097. Hey, what is the hardest question you've ever been asked? Most difficult question has been asked of you. And, and by the way, do you like being asked the hard questions? A anybody like being asked the hard questions? Okay, you were the people that liked the pop quizzes in school, too. So I got a problem there. You know, whether you like the hard questions or not, I've noticed that they're part of life. You know, questions are part of life. I, like, uh, sometimes you get annoying questions. Have you ever been around a toddler that's learning to ask questions, and suddenly everything is, why? Why? And you can answer it, why? And you can answer it again, why? And they just keep asking it, and you just finally go, because! Annoying questions. And, and then there's those unfair questions. You ever been asked an unfair question? I get asked all the time, are you always this stupid? <laughs> there's really not a good way to answer that, but, uh, you know, it's unfair. Or right, then there's pointless questions, right? Does anyone ever ask you, are you asleep? <laughs> really? Because if I am, I can't answer. Uh, or, or do you like the weather? Uh, it doesn't really matter if you like the weather or not, because the weather is. You know, last time I checked, none of us can control it. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't have the wind blowing like this on Sunday mornings, right? And everybody's worried about how their hair looks. Just a good day for bad hair. It's okay. Uh, you can't do that. Or, or, you know, we got to ask this a lot. Why did it take so long to finish the building? Um, I don't care. We're in the building, right? It's here. So it doesn't matter anymore. And then you've got those academic questions that really can, you know, be challenging. Like, how about this one? What's the capital of South Dakota? See, nobody wants to shout it out. And the, there's like three people from the Dakotas that know the answer. The answer is Pierre. Say, so use that one to trump your friends sometime. Uh, you know, or, you know, how about the, uh, what's the airspeed uh, of an unladen swallow? Uh, the, uh, see, you just don't know. Um, and then there's life questions. Like, what am I going to be when I grow up? Some of you are still asking that. Or why is there suffering in the world? Difficult questions. Today, I want us to hear what I think is the most difficult question that Jesus asks us. In fact, I call it the great question. And it goes like this. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. He says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Now, first of all, this question is for Jesus' followers. It's not for everybody. It's for those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, who believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for their sins and was raised from the dead, and they have made a commitment to follow Jesus with their life. That's who Jesus is addressing because he said, you're calling me Lord. You're the ones who are identifying me as Savior, as Master, as the King of your life. Why are you that are identifying me as your leader not doing what I say? After all, we claimed him as Lord, right? We're, we chose to follow him. We confessed him as our Savior. So why don't we obey? Especially when we know the results of ignoring Jesus. We know the results of ignoring Jesus because Jesus tells us what they are in this passage. L listen with me. Follow along. Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, Immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So Jesus puts it really plainly. 
He says, look, if you hear what I say and you do what I say, you're going to have a life that is built strong. You're going to have a life that has a solid foundation and and that when the storms of life come, because the storms will come, when the storms of life come, your your life is going to stand firm. It's going to survive. It's going to be healthy. But the person who listens to me and ignores me, doesn't do what I say, they're going to be like the, you know, the person who, who built that house without a foundation. When the storms come, and the storms will come, then your life is going to fall apart. Your life is going to crash. There is going to be great destruction in your life. So, which kind of life do you desire? Do you want a strong life that can stand the storms? Or do you want a weak life that's going to crash? So, do you want a strong life or do you want a weak life? Okay, you see, that's a duh question, isn't it? Because I've yet to meet anybody who said, hey, my goal, my purpose is to have a life that is completely falling down all the time. You know, I, I just, in fact, I, I look forward to rebuilding my life out of the rubble on a weekly basis. I, I just want it to be one tragedy, one crisis after another, never accomplish anything because it just falls down. No, nobody says that. We all want a strong life. We all want a healthy life. We all want a life that's going to stand the storms. But we don't make those choices to have that kind of life. Jesus tells us what that life looks like. It's a life that is built on what he teaches. So the path is before you, before us. We get to decide what kind of life we're going to have, and it all depends on hearing and doing what Jesus tells us. So I can tell you this. As a church... Calvary is committed to living the commands and instructions of Jesus. In other words, Calvary is built on the foundation of truth. Uh, Our very first essential doctrine is this. We believe the Bible is the inherent, inspired Word of God that tells us what to believe and how to live. We believe this book is our guide for living, and that's why we offer them to people who need them. Because we want you to read the Bible, we want you to study the Bible, because we know if you do, your life will be stronger and healthier. Everything we teach is based on this book. All of our ministries that we offer are instructed by Scripture. If you're wondering what your kids are learning in their uh, areas right now, it's all biblically based. All of our decisions are to please God. So know this. Here's some of the things that we believe because this book informs us. We believe that Jesus is the Savior, the only Savior. There's no other options. There's no other way to God except Jesus, because Jesus said so. John chapter 14, verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. That's it. In John chapter 3, Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. So there's one way to God, and that's through Jesus. And so we're going to promote Jesus. We want to lead people to Jesus in Lake Havasu City and to the ends of the earth because we believe Jesus can change your life. Jesus can change your life. We know Jesus forgives sin, but do you realize he forgives all your sin? See, every one of us has those, I wish I could do that over, kind of moments in our life. Every one of us has those things that we would hate for everybody to know about. Those failures, those mistakes, those stumbles, those intentional choices to rebel and disobey. And yet here's the thing. When we confess our sins, God forgives us of all our sin. That's awesome. He'll change your life. He forgives your sins. Jesus will set you free from bondage. You do not have to live life as an addict. You do not have to be enslaved to that habit any longer. Jesus will teach you how to live. So here's another question. Has Jesus changed your life? Have you experienced that life-changing relationship with Jesus? If you haven't, then then we want you to know that that Christ can change you. And and not only has he changed your life, but is Jesus changing your life today? Because, you know, this following Jesus is not a one-time decision that you make in a church or to get baptized. It is an ongoing transformation that he wants to do the rest of your life to grow you in the character of Christ so that you become more like him. So is Jesus changing your life? Or do you want Jesus to change your life today? So maybe you're sitting here and you're stuck. 
you, you just kind of don't like where you are and you don't like where your life is heading and you can see the next storm coming and you know it's going to crash your life and you want to change. Let me just tell you, don't leave here today wondering if God can change your life. We want to share with you that he can. And after the service, some of us pastors are going to be out front at the Connection Center. There'll be pastors over at the Connection Center, the Family Connection Center over here where the student wing is. And, and we just, if you've got questions, we want to be able to answer them. We want to talk with you. We want to share with you how Christ can change your life. You need someone to pray with you and talk with you. Our members of our prayer team are going to be here across the front. And they would love to minister to you and, and help you find that life-changing power of Christ in your life. Because we know that Jesus is the Savior, and we know that Jesus can change your life. And we also believe that following means obeying. Being a follower of Jesus is not about joining a church, even joining Calvary. Okay? I, I love people to come here. I want them to be a part of this. But understand, joining a church doesn't make a difference. Using a label doesn't make a difference. Calling yourself a Christian doesn't change your life. Being a good person isn't enough. It means believing in Jesus enough to take what he says and apply it to your life. His words, your life, that's the difference. That's the place. That's what it means to really follow Jesus. Calvary is built on the foundation of truth. And Calvary is furnished with love. Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, there's a lot of people, including a lot of Christians, who are enamored with the idea of being brutally honest. In fact, they, they think it's a virtue. Oh, it's just how I am. I'm brutally honest. Some of you have some friends. Some of you are that person. You just think that's the greatest thing in the world. I'm just going to call it like I see it. I'm going to tell you that. But here's the thing. The Bible never encourages us to be brutally honest. God tells us to do everything in love. To do everything in love. In fact, <clears throat> the Apostle Paul was even clear in the book of Ephesians. He says, speak the truth in love. It's truth in love. And, and so, in fact, isn't it nice that phones work here too? <laughs> I'm glad that we checked that out, and that's good, because technology is important. Um, but, uh, you know, if you read the Bible, and we encourage you to do that, if you read the Bible, you see that the times that Jesus is harsh, when, when he's actually kind of rebuking people for, for how they're living their life, he's usually directing that at religious people who are not loving God or not loving people. That, that's, who, that's who the Bible is harsh towards uh, because truth is always truth, but for truth to transform lives, it should be wrapped in love. It should be wrapped in love because we cannot represent Jesus unless we reflect his character. Um, it's one of our core values at Calvary. We can't really represent Christ unless we reflect his character. Because Jesus modeled love. Throughout his life, he modeled what it was to love people. He loved the children. Let the little children come to me and forbid them not. You know, when the disciples are trying to keep the kids away, hey kids, get out of here, you're bothering Jesus. Jesus said, no, let them come. And we do that. We love our kids because we invest in our children and our teens. We've got security measures. We've got background checks on every volunteer. It's, it's something that's important to us. And here's the thing. I don't know if, if you've had a chance to do that because a lot of people just came in, sat down, and went, oh, this is cool. But if you haven't checked out the student wing and the early childhood wing, you ought to see what our team has done in those places. It is amazing. Your kids are not going to want to go home. And some of you are like, cool. <laughs> they can stay a little bit longer. It's good. Now, you know, we love, we love the kids in this community. Uh, Jesus loved the outcasts, what he called the least of these. And that's good news because you know what the reality is? Every one of us is really an outcast. Every one of us is broken and hurting, and we need God to redeem our lives. We need God to heal our lives. We need the mercy and grace of Jesus in us because we're all in that same place. We all are broken sinners. And then, of course, Jesus loved the people around him. He loved his community. Scripture tells us he wept over Jerusalem, his town. And we're going to love our community. That's why we serve the way that we do here at Calvary. Um, we believe people will listen to the truth if they see our love. 
People will listen to the truth if they see our love. So we're going we're gonna to serve Lake Havasu City. We're going to serve our schools. We're going to serve our community organizations. We're going to serve our neighbors. <clears throat> in fact, we will love the people that God puts in our path. Think about this. If the great commandment is to love God and to love people, then that means that we ought to love the people that God puts before us. Now, think about how that plays out. You're going to leave here today, and most of you are going to go eat someplace. And if you are mean and nasty to the, the server, whether they are good or not, it doesn't matter. If you're mean and nasty to the server, then we're going to come and take that Calvary decal back. <laughs> right? Because we're the people of God. We're supposed to represent Christ. We're going to do that by loving people, whoever God puts in our path. And he's going to put those servers in your path. What about the people in the medical office? I know you're there because you don't feel good. You're there because you're, you're afraid and you're finding out tests and you're doing all that kind of stuff. Then we still ought to love them even if we have to wait an hour. See, why does that give you uh, the, the right to be rude to people just because you had to wait? Last time I checked, the Apostle Paul said love is, do you guys know? Patient and love is kind. How, how are we going to love the people across, that come across our path if we're not patient and we're not kind? Here, let me get really practical. That means that we need to love the people that God puts in our path, including other drivers. <laughs> yeah. Road rage never represents Jesus. Can I just tell you that? And, and you need to remember that when you're leaving the parking lot today, because even though our parking is better, it's still crowded out there, right? And none of us have any idea what it's like trying to get across the highway at Acoma or Oro Grande because we've never done this before in this many people. So love is patient and love is kind and doesn't run over your neighbor. Uh, so, see, we love the people God puts in our path so that we can accomplish our mission of life change. Calvary's purpose is life change. This is the why of Calvary. It's why we do what we do. It's why we do it the way that we do it. Calvary exists to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ through the love of his people and the power of his truth. We built this worship center so that we can share the hope of life change with this community of people who don't know Jesus and his love. That's the purpose. It is not so that we can be more comfortable in worship. I hope you're comfortable in worship. By the way, you guys make this place look good. Can I just tell you that? Yeah, you know, it, and, and, and I hope you're comfortable, but uh, we didn't build it so we'd be comfortable. We built it because people need to know Jesus and, and need to know that he loves them and forgives them and can change their life. Uh, we built great space for children and teens because we will never stop investing in the next generation. Somebody's got to see that they're the leaders of tomorrow, and some of them are the leaders of today, and their generation needs to know the grace of God. We, we built nicer parking so that guests won't leave because they can't find a place to park. And by the way, let me just tell you, it's going to change next week because uh, we're going to get signs up for guest parking and things like that. And some of you are like, I'm going to park here. And next week you're going to come back and go, I can't park here. And we're going to have early childhood parking for the people with little kids that are down by the early childhood wing. Because we, we want to make it easier for people that are coming to check things out. And, and we do all of this so that we can tell people the truth that Jesus can change their lives. That's why we're doing it. We just want them to know the truth, that God really has the power to change their lives. And so we can demonstrate the love of God to them so that we can celebrate life change like we got to do a few minutes ago with those getting baptized. So Jesus asked the question, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Calvary's answer is we're going to obey Jesus no matter what. What's your answer going to be? Are you going to build a life that is solid and strong or are you going to build a life that is flimsy and weak and that the storms will crash? The amazing thing is God has given us the choice. Let's pray.